This is me, growing up in Russia's far north and wearing a bunch of dead animals. This hat used to be an arctic fox, or probably a couple of them, and the cute little fur coat is made from mouton, a lamb skin. Wow, okay, that was like two decades ago. Now, fur is the thing of the past, right? Or not really? While many brands and even countries are ditching fur, in some regions animal pelts are still in big demand. This is my mom would agree, this is her going to work this winter. All these minks are most likely from Denmark, once Europe's biggest hub of mink farms. But COVID outbreaks at the farms in 2020 are changing that, in addition to heavy pressure from animal rights groups. Denmark has announced it will eliminate the country's entire population of farmed minks after mutated coronavirus strains were reported among the animals. So how can we stop using fur once and for all? And can we? Soft, so delicate, fur had been seen as a symbol of status desired and promoted in Western okay, cultures. Okay. I'm adopted, did you know that? <laughs> That's quite all right, young man. What are you staring at? Pat, did you see that lovely lady in that gorgeous coat? Oh, well, how could a girl help but notice that coat? And harsh Russian winters are certainly good for fur. From full-scale raccoon coats to sable hats, fur was a strong wardrobe staple in Soviet movies too. Mech is a part of Russian culture. This is Anna lebza Clemens, a founder of Fashion Consulting Group. She is an expert on what's trending in Russia's apparel market. It's definitely a fur coat or shuba in Russian that rules them all. This video went viral in 2021 and shows what people in Russia's Yakutia region wear when it's minus 70 degrees Celsius. A lot of fur. 400,000 fur coats are sold in Russia every year. It's the second largest fur market after China. Shubas are still in fashion. The November issue of Vogue Russia called fur and a few accessories a modern aristocratic look. Radus веры в то, что искусственные меха лучше, чем натуральные, он ниже, чем если мы, так скажем, сравним его с градусом в Соединенных Штатах или в Европе. Most fur sold in Russia is imported. Ming is the most commonly traded fur globally. Before the pandemic, China, Denmark, Poland, the Netherlands and the US were the biggest producers of mink skins. In 2019, there were 56 million mink skins produced globally. But the pandemic is reshaping the industry. Two large producers, Denmark and the Netherlands, have shut down their fur farms. China and Russia are the biggest consumers. And there are some fans in the US and Canada too. In China, 80% of all fur garments produced are sold domestically. But the reasons people in China opt for fur are quite different from Russia. 32% of the consumers are buying fur because of fashion. They buy fur trim, not the full length. Pai Su is the co-founder of animal welfare and non-profit Act Asia. She has conducted research on the fur trade in China. 28% don't know what they're buying. They have no idea is a real fur or fake fur. And only 23% are for warmth. And this means more than half of all consumers in China are buying fur not for its warmth, but for how it looks. Hood trims, pom-pom fur beanie, shoes, a vest, or even slippers. Fur comes in many different forms. What does it all mean for the environment? The fur industry has had historically an, uh, a terrible impact on biodiversity. Richard Bisset is a campaign manager from Respect for Animals. He has done a lot of research on the environmental impact of fur. Fur farming and the presence of non-native alien species, which is recognised as one of the key uh, main threats to biodiversity globally. Many animals kept on fur farms aren't native to the area, and sometimes they escape. Take American mink, 
a highly efficient invasive species. It is now present in most European countries as a result of the fur industry. In Denmark, most free-ranging mink were born on a farm. They have a particularly severe impact on ground-nesting wetland birds, seabirds, rodents and amphibians. And they bully away the brothers, the European minks. Have you seen a raccoon while on a walk in Western Europe? Well, it shouldn't be there either. At farms, the pelts go through processing. To prevent fur from rotting, manufacturers apply chemicals. This can include formaldehyde and chromium. Both are toxic. There is little academic research on the total carbon footprint of fur farms. Greenhouse gases from fur production in Finland, for example, is estimated to be 120 gigagrams of carbon dioxide equivalent. Emissions at fur farms mainly come from excrement and the incineration of carcasses, both of which release nasty greenhouse gases like methane and nitrous oxide. And then there is another factor that cannot be ignored, animal welfare. Remember that signature raccoon coat Carrie Bradshaw had in Sex in the City? It's made from 20 raccoons. And that mink coat that environmentally conscious Phoebe falls for in France? It's 70 minks. Animal rights groups across the globe have been exposing the industry and showing what's behind the precious fur and pushing the fashion industry for change. Over a thousand big retailers have stopped using fur. Israel became the first country to prohibit the sales of fur. Soon California will not produce or sell any new fur garments. The fur industry is fighting back. This is the website of Fur Europe, an umbrella organization covering the entire value chain of the European fur sector. They call fur a slow fashion alternative to synthetics and a renewable fashion material with an incredibly long product life. The fur industry's claims are misleading and unacceptable because actually, and when they do make these claims, what the fur industry is doing is greenwashing what is actually a resource-intensive, highly polluting industry. It's true that you probably won't find many fur garments in the trash, but some brands are actively collecting old fur to give it a new look. Here are just some examples of upcycled coats made from used old-fashioned fur clothing. So it's clear we still fall for fur's aesthetics, but if it's just for the look, can't we just use faux fur? Искусственная шуба является прекрасной альтернативой, альтернативой натуральной шуме с точки зрения стиля, потому что это любой цвет, это же тканевая основа, это в отличие от э, того, что шуба там кожаная основа, и она предполагает определенные ограничения в дизайне, в конструкциях. Faux fur has no limitations. Designers love it. But polyester, polyester, oh, and polyester again. So first of all, like all those synthetic alternatives, they are oil-based. Professor Anne Schwarz Pfeiffer researches smart textiles at Niederhain University of Applied Sciences. It's not an endless resource and it has a, a huge uh, environmental impact on producing those fibers. But designers keep experimenting with faux fur. Its quality and looks are improving fast. There are even attempts to make bio-based fur or fur derived from recycled plastic bottles. Faux fur is a solid alternative, but it only makes sense from the environmental point of view if the garment is made to last. Sounds good for light winters. How about those minus 70 degree winters in Yakutia? То есть высокотехнологичная куртка на сегодняшний день является гораздо более функциональной, практичной, и даже по теплу она может превышать меховое изделие. Actually, the second outfit featured here is pretty high tech. Still some fur here and there, but not full scale fur camouflage anymore. Many winter jackets are made from synthetics, but there are options to use recycled materials combined with reused feathers from old pillows, and some are completely feather free. So can we stop using animal fur? Пока человек не может отказаться от использования мяса и использования кожи, довольно смешно говорить об отказе от натурального меха. We need legislators to take responsibility. It can't all be left down to consumers or to retailers and designers and the fashion industry. We go to space. Did our space, <laughs> you know, autonomous, they don't wear fur, do they? It's a minus 
I know I just searched the internet, is minus 270 Celsius. Lots of things changed since my childhood. I don't own a fur coat anymore. Winter jackets like this one suit my needs and look pretty good. This one can resist minus 25 degrees Celsius. What do you think about fur? Have you or your family member ever owned a fur coat or another fur garment? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this.